A lot of guys ask me about the benefits of taking human growth hormone as a way to build muscle, burn body fat, and improve their overall health. But in today's video, what I want to do is actually cover something known as sermorelin, which is a part of the polypeptide called GHRH, or growth hormone releasing hormone. Now, sermorelin is indeed a very powerful peptide, and it definitely has received a lot of attention in the athletic performance community and also the bodybuilding community for its ability to support muscle growth and improve overall conditioning. So we need to understand that it is considered to be the biologically active fragment of GHRH, growth hormone releasing hormone. Now polypeptides or also called polypeptide or peptide hormones are simply long strings of amino acids in their most basic structural configuration. Now, this configuration allows for the signaling function of peptides in general to follow. The normal function of GHRH is, as the name suggests, to stimulate growth hormone production. Now, sermoralin acetate, although being a synthetically produced analog, produces the same biological effects of GHRH itself. Now, it has been administered in children for growth hormone deficiency and is generally well tolerated in studies. Now, aside from using it as an exogenous stimulator of growth hormone, it has also been used as a diagnostic tool for growth hormone deficiency. So in the body, sermorelin actually activates the GHRH receptors found in the anterior pituitary gland, which signals to the pituitary to produce and release more growth hormone in the body through the so-called somatotropic cells. So we can see here, this study was titled Sermorelin, a review of its use in the diagnosis and treatment of children with idiopathic growth hormone deficiency. So why use sermorelin if it's the same thing as growth hormone? Well, it's because it's not. Now, due to it being one step prior to growth hormone itself, one prevents overdoses of HGH since negative feedback mechanisms, among them somatostatin, prevent it, potentially increasing its safety profile. Now, exogenously administered HGH also raises IGF-1 in the liver, unlike sermorelin or GHRH. Now, sermorelin also does not have the associations to pro-carcinogenic and pro-diabetogenic effects that long-term human growth hormone does. Now, different options for growth hormone therapy exist. The most known and popular other substances being ibutamorin and ipamorelin. Now, as sermorelin is active one step before the GH analogs IB and IP, it would follow that it would have different side effects. So here we can see sermorelin injection enters the bloodstream, reaches the pituitary gland, it stimulates growth hormone releasing hormone receptors, and produces growth hormone, and then growth hormone enters the bloodstream, and we can see the different pathways affecting fat cells, liver cells, uh, muscle cells, and glucose metabolism. There is a lot of information that I present here on my YouTube channel. However, if you wanna know exactly what protocols are best for your unique biology, then I suggest booking in a free Boost Your Biology Strategy session with a senior member of my team, as we'll start to map out and strategize the best action plan for your unique biology. You'll see that linked down below in the video description. So just as a reminder, sermorelin, we'll see that linked down below in the video description as part of the bloke's wellness. They have a service where you can book in for a consultation with a doctor to get sermorelin. Now, some of the most common unwanted side effects are not usually seen with sermorelin that are massively increased appetite and though through ghrelin agonism as well as the joint and muscle pain associated with ibutamorin. Now, ipamorelin is also known in high doses to cause water retention, tingling or numbness of the hands, feet, potentially insulin resistance and hypertension. Now, here are some other potential benefits of sermorelin. As bodybuilders have now figured out, GH administration enhances growth and recovery as well as improving body composition. Sermorelin is suspected to have very similar effects that may be less pronounced, however. 
In one study, hypogonadal males were given sermorelin, showing that specific hypogonadal symptoms could be ameliorated, such as fat gain and muscular atrophy. And so we can see the study here was titled Beyond the Androgen Receptor, the role of growth hormone secretagogues in the modern management of body composition in hypogonadal males. Here are the other potential benefits of sermorelin. In addition, anti-aging as well as heart health improvements were observed. Elderly male and female subjects were given sermorelin via subcutaneous injection. Skin thickness, libido, and well-being all saw improvements. They also gained 1.26 kilograms in lean body mass. Also, following a heart attack, sermorelin was able to improve the recovery in swine, which are some of the closest animals to humans, biologically speaking. Now, it is important to mention some potential side effects associated with sermorelin administration. According to drugs.com, the most common sermorelin side effects are facial flushing, headache, nausea, redness, swelling at injection site, pain, paleness, strange taste in the mouth. In the treatment of GH deficiency in children, it was well tolerated though. According to a review, the most common adverse effects were transient facial flushing and injection site pain. Now, here are the common therapeutic dosages that have been used by various qualified practitioners around the world for sermorelin. For dosage, Therapeutically, it is usually administered at doses starting from 100 to 200 micrograms per day for improvements in body composition, often together with other GH analogs such as ipamorelin. For duration, in longevity research, it is usually cycled for three to six months. For timing, in GH deficient children, studies of Prakash and Goa, it is usually given at night before bed, first thing in the morning or at least two hours after eating. Now, here's one experience report of somebody who has used Sermorellin. He said, Sermorellin is great. Within the first week, I started sleeping like a baby on it. About a month in, I realized I wasn't very sore the day after lifting, and I hit it pretty hard. Heavy work sets in the 75% to 95% range, followed by back off sets totaling 100 reps for volume on compound lifts plus accessories. I'm still tight and need to stretch, but not sore. Two months in my scale weight is the same, but in van visibly see I've traded some fat for muscle. Three months in more of the same, four to six months, and I feel great. Old aches and pains are gone. Anecdotal, but I swear I look younger, significantly leaner than I would be in the same time frame with diet and exercise alone. Hair is thicker, etc. Stopping treatment and sleep keeps up for at least three to four months for me, as does everything else, and I cycle every six months. It's very subtle. You won't inject and be Ronnie Coleman in an hour, but your body will respond over time above and beyond its natural set points. Here are some more experiential reports using Sermorelin. I've been on Sermorelin for about five weeks now, and I'll say that maybe over the last week or so, my recovery has greatly improved and my energy levels have skyrocketed. Before, I would pretty consistently be sore for about two to three days after a workout, and now I seem to be recovering in about a single day mostly. The recovery has been so good lately that I'm even considering working out daily again. This next person said, started Sir Morrillon 30 units two days ago. Stomach not happy, bowels not thrilled either. Also seem a bit more tired than usual. And I have some stomach acid burping in my throat, which I basically never have. So the final takeaways are that Sir Morrillon may be a safer alternative to taking growth hormone directly if increasing muscle mass and decreasing fat mass is the main goal. Now, it is relatively cheap and the effective dosage is quite low. It might be difficult to get a common doctor to prescribe it. However, since the indication for its use is very limited. Uh, in some cases, as described before, caution must be taken with sermorelin or any GH secretagogues or analogs since there are clear and studied side effects of increasing growth hormone in sick people. So just as a reminder, if you do want to check out Sermorelin, you can try to gain access to it using the service linked down below, blokes. You'll see that link down below. Otherwise, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.